Four years ago, I made the decision to buy an ultra wide monitor for my setup, and since, I've spent over 5,000 hours using one without looking back. I've just recently picked up this 38 inch model from LG, and I think it's one of the best productivity monitors that you can find. Today, I'll be talking about my experience with this and my other two ultra wides to help those of you wondering if you should get one come to a decision. So, to start, any ultra wide you buy is going to be a much bigger and heavier display than you're used to. If you've only ever had a single 16 by 9 monitor, this is going to seem massive at first and take some time to get comfortable with. The biggest issue you'll run into depending on your desk size is the limited space you get on each side of the monitor. This is especially true if you use a pair of desktop speakers like the Audio Engine HD3s. If you have a laptop or PC you want to keep on the side, you might not have room to store it there and the monitor could end up protruding off the sides. In my case, the tabletop I have here from Ikea is 74 inches long, which is a large desk compared to most setups, and even then, the display takes up a significant portion of it. When I first got my ultrawide, it was incredibly cramped as I was trying to fit both my gaming PC, speakers, and a Mac on a much smaller desk. There definitely is a trade-off to having this increased horizontal real estate, but once you try it, it's really hard to go back. I've used two 4K monitors recently, and even my 240Hz OLED isn't enough to make me forget about this thing. To save some space and keep things underneath the monitor, I highly recommend picking up a VESA arm. It gives this super nice floating design and makes it easier to have things like a clock or my iPad underneath. You can grab any VESA mount that supports your display's weight and size, but I'd also recommend spending a little extra on a gas spring arm as opposed to something like a Viva one. The reason for this is you don't need to use an Allen wrench to make adjustments or keep it in place. There's a ton of options for 34 inch monitors and I'll leave the one I recommend down below, but finding one that would support this larger 38 inch display was a bit harder. I ended up grabbing this one from Aeroswing and it's worked great. The nice thing about having an arm is it makes it pretty easy to manage your cables and keep the desk looking clean. Now with having this extra horizontal space, you might ask why you wouldn't just go for a dual monitor setup. With a secondary monitor, you'll have to put it off to the side so you're not seeing a bezel when looking straight, whereas on the ultrawide, it's a single screen that's extended on each side. You are still sacrificing some screen real estate compared to having two 16x9 monitors, that is unless you go with a monster 49 inch. It's also probably not ideal if you use two separate machines at the same time, as picture in picture isn't as good as having two separate full-size displays. Ultrawides are definitely a great option for gaming, but there's a case for having a high refresh gaming monitor and then a 4K panel for productivity next to it. This is probably a better option for someone like my boy Converix who streams, as you really don't want to record an aspect ratio other than 16 by 9. I used to have stacked ultrawides to sort of have a best of both worlds, but that quickly became overkill. I never really used my top one and ended up leaving it off most days. This single monitor monitor setup is definitely my favorite so far and what I'll be sticking with for a while. Something I have done is pick up a laptop stand from Rain Design that I keep to the side and this is nice just so I can keep things like Spotify or a less important window. This doesn't take up as much room as a separate monitor would and it's convenient for those times I need to use Touch ID. Now you're probably still wondering with everything that's said about ultrawides whether they actually make you more productive. For me I can definitely say that they do. I can easily easily fit three windows at a time without feeling cramped, and when doing work like programming, this is incredibly helpful. I can keep up with my code editor, localhost, along with a browser window open to documentation or Claude. If you're used to having a terminal window open taking up space, a quick hack for you if you use iTerm or Warp is to enable the Quake mode, which allows you to bind a keyboard shortcut to quickly pop open a window at the top of your screen above everything else. You can still open new tabs without disrupting any of your windows. I've literally not used a separate terminal since finding out about this and it's been so convenient. With this, you never have to use an integrated terminal within VS Code and waste space in the editor. Now with that said, it will still take some getting used to, especially if you're coming from a single monitor, before you're taking full advantage of this horizontal space. Though there's something to be said about having a single or just two small windows open on a nice wallpaper filling the background. Now aside from programming, video editing is another of my top use cases. Having so much space for the timeline means there's 
less zooming and panning that I need to do. I find that whenever I have to edit on a smaller screen, I feel very cramped, especially as I keep open my shot list as I edit. Now, if you're a student, researching or writing is incredibly good on an ultra wide. You can have Google Docs open on one window with your assignment and a separate browser tab open. If your workflow benefits more from vertical space though, the LG Dual Up or just a larger 16 by nine monitor is actually going to make more sense. Quick side note is every ultra wide I've ever used has been curved and personally, I like this a lot. No matter where you look at it from, the display wraps around you, making it super easy to look at the corners. It's definitely a noticeable difference, but not in a bad way. The only scenario I'd recommend against a curved display is if you're doing work in something like CAD, where you need to have precise straight lines. These days though, curved displays really aren't that much more expensive than flat panels, and it almost seems like it's the default for ultrawides. That actually brings up the question of cost, and you definitely are paying a premium for an ultrawide. If you compare the typical 1440p monitor with the same 160Hz refresh rate, or even a 4K 120Hz monitor, it can still be a couple hundred dollar difference in some cases. You can find 34 inch ultrawides around $300, but if you want something from a better brand with a nicer display, you're probably spending closer to five or six hundred dollars. Once you start looking bigger at a 38 inch display, most of the options are at or above a thousand dollars, so it's not a small purchase by any means. This price really depends on what features you care about. For example, I've noticed monitors with USB-C are significantly more expensive than those without. An integrated KVM switch is another that will drive up the price. Once you start searching, you'll realize that there's a lot less options for ultra wides, especially once you start to look at higher resolutions and sizes. 4K ultra wides do exist, but there's only a few options that are super expensive. Some, like the one I have here, has the same 3840 horizontal pixels, but only a 1600 pixel height, so calling this 4K is a bit of a stretch, especially as the pixel density is pretty much the same as a 1440p 34 inch. 5K 2K ultra wides have a closer pixel density than a proper 4K panel, but the biggest deal breaker with them is the insane price and them only having 60 hertz versions. Most people probably wouldn't be running games on here very well, but even just using the monitor for work, once you're accustomed to 120 hertz or above, anything below feels laggy. That brings up a worthwhile discussion. Gaming on ultra wide is seriously an awesome experience and one that has only gotten better since I first started using one. These days, basically every new game supports the aspect ratio, and for ones that don't or don't fully, there's often mods that unlock that ability. Though if you're unlucky enough to come across a game that has no support whatsoever, the black bars are a big annoyance, especially if you have a larger ultra wide. If you're a console gamer who's looking to have a one monitor set up to work in game on, this probably isn't the right choice for you. The black bars are just annoying to look at and ruin the immersion of whatever you're trying to play. Assuming you have a capable PC though and play more single player games, this is where ultra wides really shine. The level of immersion with the display wrapping around you is insane because it's a lot more like how you see in real life. Even if you play more competitive titles, I don't think you should completely write off ultra wides, as you can get one with a high refresh rate and potentially have an advantage in that you can see much more of the map. The only downside to having a monitor with this many pixels is it will be significantly harder to run than a 1080p or 1440p display. It's not quite as taxing as 4K, but you'll still need a beefy PC to play the latest games at higher settings and still retain a high frame rate. Personally, I've always cranked my settings on ultra wide until I hit around 90, as this is where for more chill games, you can have a smooth experience but not sacrifice too much visual quality. Even after trying 4K, OLED monitors, there's just something you can't beat about having such a wide display. Overall though, using an ultrawide has been a great experience over the last 4 years, and I don't regret buying my newest 38 inch version. If you enjoyed this video, you'll want to watch this one next where I go over my entire desk setup featuring this monitor, along with various other accessories that keep me productive. Thanks for watching, and take care.